I'm Dimitar Berbatov and this is my 1 to 11. Go, obviously, Van der Sar. Always talking and uh, you know, socializing with people. And the bus, we sit together and uh, always trying to make me speak or something, but you know me, I don't speak much. When the game comes and everything, he was fully concentrated and, you know, unbelievable. Commanding the defense, the player I play with in the goalkeeper post is, is Van der Sar number one. Right back. My career was spent mostly in England, so most of them were from England. So, of course, I put Gary Neville, the same as uh, Van der Sar. He was always talking off the pitch, on the pitch. I will always remember the way he was training, you know, pff, unbelievable. Full professional, you know, uh, and I can remember telling me one time, you know, I can see a young player coming, but, you know, I need to train every day like I'm 20 because, you know, they are catching up to us. So he was right and he was Great professional, great professional, and uh, overall great person. The statistics speak for him, so he was, he was great. Left back, of course, my friend, my brother from another mother, Evra. Somehow he was the first guy when I scored a goal, he was the first guy to congratulate me, you know. I was up there on the pitch, and all of a sudden I see Patrice Evra enjoying and celebrating with me. And he was always uh, so sincere when he was enjoying my goals, because uh, I can see it in his face, so it makes me really happy. Even if it, for his small size, he was jumping, fighting with uh, big guys. Playing against him was always uh, difficult, especially for the first ball. I'm a big guy, but he was jumping all over me. He was the joker of the dressing room, you know. He and uh, always trying to make pranks of people, putting the music up, you know. Yeah, I don't like this music. I don't care. It's, it's my music, you know. So he, he, he was great. There is uh, three people I consider putting there, but obviously it's not going to happen. So. So I have uh, Vidic in Rio, obviously, but Ledley King is uh, on top with them. You know, I played with him in, uh, in Tottenham and unfortunately he was uh, prone to injuries a lot, which uh, cut his uh, career short, but he was on the level with both of them. Obviously I played with Rio and Vida and for me they struck great partnership. I mean, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Vida was going through woes you know, he was going to literally go through walls, you know, for the team, for, the, for, for his teammates. You know, his, his face like a war hero, you know, from... Uh, and uh, he was obviously a Serbian and I can speak the language, so he was the uh, closest person to me in the dressing room. On the other side, you have Rio. I never saw a player, a defender, who never done uh, a tackling, you know. He always tried to anticipate the game, trying to read the opponent. This is what I like in a player. And even if he was a defender, He's trying to do this every game. He's always there because he knows where the ball is going to go. And this is intelligence, pure and simple. We're going on to my midfield. Here I will put my friend Stylian Petrov. He can run all day and I can go to bed. He was going to still run him. He don't know how to surrender, so he was fighting even in Aston Villa in the national team when we played together. When I play against him, even, uh, even great for me because I always try like to play against the best for me. He was one of the best and uh, I think he deserves to play in an even bigger team. So he's going to be in my central midfield zone. Obviously, Paul Scholes. You know, I like him because he was like me. You don't speak much. You don't see him in the dressing room. When we finished training, he was already in the car going home, you know, <laughs> shower and finish him. But everybody was respecting him because when you step on the pitch, he was destroying people, you know. The passing and the shooting and the vision he had, he was unbelievable. That's why he was one of the great midfield players of all time. On the left, in the midfield, Gikti as well. I'll put him there. It will be offensive team. Again, like, like uh, Paul Scholes, he was a uh, very quiet guy. But uh, I like people and players like this who lead by example. You don't speak much. You have players who just want to speak and yell. They show insecurity this way. But he was calm, you know his quality. He go out on the pitch and he was doing his job. Because of him, I started to do yoga, you know. I'm not the stretchiest guy. You just need to be observing. You need to observe people sometimes. If you want to learn, uh, you learn from the best. So I, when I see him, uh, for example, after training, going to the gym and doing yoga with teacher and stuff like this, and you see his body, he was 40 and he was more fit than me, you start to think, yeah, maybe the thing he's doing, maybe I can do it, so he'll help me play more. Obviously, I need to put Cristiano there. I played with him one year. And the thing that struck me with him, it was that obviously he had a talent, but he was working more than everybody else. He was unbelievable. And that's why I, when I have a chance to play with young players who are now starting to get their uh, careers, 
obviously they all of them, you know, I like Ronaldo, I'm trying to imitate him, you know, stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, it didn't happen like this from one day. He was working every day first, going home last, swimming, gym, all the stuff you need. He was doing it to become the best. And you can understand that he wanted to be, to be number one in the game. Obviously, I was thinking to put myself in the team, you know, but we'll see, I'll leave this for the for the <laughs> I will put Rooney in front. In the pitch, you see he was training hard, he was working tires, and he still works. I hear him running all over the pitch, you know, like he's 20, uh, and I admire this, I admire this. We, we have a decent uh, partnership as well, but listen, there is a people in some teams, they don't speak to each other off the pitch, but when they're on the pitch, they understand, like, you think, they sleep together, you know, something like this. But trust me, sometimes you don't need to speak to someone to understand. Good players understand each other. Who is next to win? Uh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> I struck a great partnership again in Tottenham with uh, Robbie Keane. And with him, I understand like, like this. We didn't speak much of the pitch, obviously because of me, so I don't like to speak, you know. But <laughs> he knew this, he knew this, and he was like, but don't worry, I know you. So when we step on the pitch, he was great. I think uh, we scored a lot of goals together. So I like him like a person. And he was again tireless, running around, screaming, supporting the teammates, trying to make everybody feel good. On the pitch, fighting for the team. Never ever I see him get offended about anything, you know, always positive. Uh, <laughs> a great guy, a great guy. That's why I'm going to put him there. I am Dimitar Berbatov and this was my 1-11. to I am not going to put myself. So, do you see the sacrifice I'm doing here? <laughs> so, 